In 2001, the world changed forever. Obviously, we all know what a massively important year this was in world history. It's the year that the mashed potato machine was invented, but not only that, the first Fast and the Furious film was released in theaters. Immediately, people knew that this was going to be a series that required potentially 15 or more films and a video game that's canon for some reason to tell the full story. Universal Studios immediately knew this too, so they sprinted to the make movies machine and said, WE GOTTA MAKE MORE SEQUELS! And they kinda just started making new installments with no real master plan or direction for the franchise besides massive swag, flashy cars, and action. John Singleton's Too Fast Too Furious is great and Justin Lin's Tokyo Drift is even better than both prior entries. But neither sequel really felt like it had anything to do with the first, also known as the one that made money. Where was the barbecue chicken? Where were the bad Latinas? Where was Vin Diesel? Where am I? What am I doing? So Tokyo Drift bombed and Universal was forced to reckon with two things. They had to offer their big stars a little bit more money in exchange for their performances in future films, and regardless of the two sequels' quality, they couldn't keep doing whatever they wanted with the franchise and make these disjointed, barely connected films. I mean, what are these? Disney's Star Wars sequels? If they wanted to capitalize off the 14th highest grossing film of 2001, they needed to come up with a plan for the franchise, reinvent themselves while still holding true to what people loved about the original trilogy. So we got back to basics with 2009's Fast and Furious, a confusingly titled entry once again hailed by Justin Lin and writer Chris Morgan that more or less ignored the previous two films and picked up the story where it might as well have left off, with Dom hiding out south of the border and Brian inexplicably still an FBI agent despite everything. While basically forgotten these days, the film blew way past the previous three and was a smash hit. The classic Vin Diesel and P-Watt chemistry was back, they were breaking bad, and mainstream audiences and critics left the theater going, hey, that was fine, I guess, which was the best reception they'd had in years. They weren't gonna let the momentum of 17th highest grossing film of 2009 die here. They had a plan, they had a vision, they were going to take this humble little franchise to heights nobody could have ever possibly imagined. They had to start moving, moving different. different. Street racing, that shit is over. Sure, a lot of people like cars and flashy JDM neon lights and whatever, but those people don't have money. Yeah. They spent it all on LED neon washer fluid reservoirs. They were setting their sights on a new audience, a more profitable audience. Things are about to get a whole hell of a lot bigger and way crazier. Buckle up, dipshit. We're going to Brazil! When you ask the Fast and Furious fandom at large which movie is their favorite, there is a very good chance Fast Five is the most common answer. This movie was a SMASH hit. Fans of the previous four films loved it, and even people who aren't huge on this series really, really liked Fast Five. Search up almost any best action movies of all time list, and it's on there. It's usually not high up, but it is there, and for this series, that is an insane achievement. To put it into money talk, this didn't just surpass Forced and Furious as the biggest success of the series, this annihilated the records coming in at over 600 million, nearly double the previous film. Fifth and Furious had the goddamn juissance, it had the sauce, the swag, this shit right here had people leaving the theater in tears. Not because it was sad, but because they had changed so much in those previous 2 hours and 10 minutes that their theater seat felt more like home to them than the place where their wife and dumbass kids lived. So let's figure out why. Fast 5, or sorry, Fast Eve, or maybe that's Fast Roman numeral 4E, or maybe it's Fast Eve? F ass dive. You may be wondering why it's just called Fast Now and not The Fast and the Furious 5 or Fast and Furious 5 or maybe even something like The F 5T and the Furious 5. This isn't the Fast series, this is the Fast and the Furious. You need both Fast and Furious in the title or I'm going to get confused. I might think this is perhaps the fifth sequel to the 1995 French film Fast. Fast Five picks up immediately where the last one left off. Dom, having learned an important lesson about not running away from his past, turns himself into the police and faces judgment for his many crimes, getting sentenced to 25 to life without the possibility of parole. Panasonic finally got their revenge. I bet they paid off the judge with a free 3DO. But Brian and Mia and Don Omar and Tego Caldron 
decide for Don that he is in fact not done running from his past and has more running to do. They flip the bus killing everyone, just killing Brian, killing no one. That amazingly resulted in no fatalities this afternoon. Is that purred happily? What are you doing, purred happily? And now they're on the run. Just what Don wanted. I ain't running anymore. Essentially, the Toretto's and Brian are more fucked than they've ever been. There's a manhunt to find them, and they're forced to hide out in Brazil! Brazil! Where none other than Vince has been hiding out since the end of the first film. How he escaped prosecution despite his severe injuries after that botched semi-truck heist is pretty low on most people's list of absurdities in this franchise, but god damn it, I'm curious. Like, he was in the hospital, how did they- How'd he get away? Surely he got got. He didn't though, probably did some shit like Tom Cruise in that one Mission Impossible movie, and instead has a wife and child in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro, a dangerous and hostile area where the impoverished citizens are fiercely loyal to a ruthless kingpin named Hernan Reyes, a man of incredible wealth and power who used his money to give the people running water, electricity, and school so they won't fight back against the destitute conditions of their surroundings. You give them just enough so that they have something to lose but not enough that they don't need you anymore. This dude's crazy! Our speed boys become his number one enemy after they accept a job for him to steal some cars from a train, but decide instead to steal it for themselves. The train scene is sick, but it's also a bit confusing why Brian, Mia, and Dom decide to double cross the others. They were told it was a job for just stealing cars and flipping them for some quick cash, but Dom uses like detective vision or something to deduce that the GT40 must be more important than the other cars and the job must be more complicated than they thought. Why they decide this is any of their business though, I don't know. They were hired to do a job and they didn't do it. I'm not saying Reyes is a good guy or anything, but his rage at the Fast Furiousers is pretty justified. Huh, no way! The guys who were robbing cars from a moving train are actually a crazy criminal empire? What the fuck? Brian and Mio, we have to stop them! Literally everything about your current situation is your own collective fault. But more importantly than anything else, this guy ZZ kills three DEA agents who try to prevent them from stealing the cars. And this gets pinned on Brian, Mia, and Dom, elevating them to the top of the USA's most wanted list. And now, Moist Dwayne Johnson and his team of DIPLOMATIC SECURITY SERVICE agents are gonna kick their asses. He's so wet in every scene, is he okay? Did the Brazilian air get to him? So they rendezvous after the heist with the GT40 and say to Vince, they say, Vince, you're a dirty dog, Vince! And Vince is like, it's not true, I am not a dirty dog! But he comes back later and takes a chip out of the GT40, and we're not talking about no sour cream and onion or sweet chili. This chip is a computer chip and contains the locations of Reyes' cash houses, so Dom is like, Vince, you dirty dog! And kicks him out to the street to be with the rest of the dirty dogs. Then Dom, Mia, and Brian look at the chip and say, Oh my god! This guy has a Brazilian dollars! But uh-oh! Dwayne Johnson and Reyes' Slipknot thugs found us, and they're about to kick our asses if we can't escape! So they have this sick shootout and chase scene down the favelas, and, and Jordana Brewster gets tetanus. They barely escape, and Dom and Brian want to get out of Brazil because, as Glenn Frey said in the classic hit song, The Heat Is On, The Heat Is On. But Mia says, no. No more running. We have to stay here or both the violent cartels and the US paramilitary are both hunting us down at the same time because I'm Prengan, I'm Pegnate, I'm Prepnat. So they stay. Wow. After all this time, Brian and Mia are with child. Who would have thought? There's a scene where Dom and Brian discuss Dom's father. By my father, by my father, by my father. Essentially, he was a saint, just the best guy of all time, which makes it all the more hilarious how much of a piece of shit Dom is. Or was. Or is. Luckily, Dom has a plan. If we can get a gang together, perhaps a crew formed by characters who were in the previous four films, we can not only make it feel like the previous disjointed and random films actually mattered, but we can also steal Reyes' 100 million dollars and never have to be hungry again. Fast Five is the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate of the Fast and Furious franchise because everyone is back. Asterisk. When I say everyone, I obviously don't mean everyone. There's no Agent Bilkins or Leon or Verone or this guy or him or <laughs> Hector. And obviously no Sean or Little Bow Wow because of timeline fuckery the movie hasn't actually happened yet. Does that mean this movie is pre-2006 or does Tokyo Drift now take place in like 
2012 or 13 or 14. You really have to admire one man's dedication to overcomplicating the timeline of a car action franchise because he likes putting his friend in his movies. And speaking of dead, of course, Letty died in the last movie, so we're not seeing her in this one or anymore ever again. She is certifiably dead and gone from this franchise forever, but otherwise, everyone is back. Gazelle, and Tego, and Leo, and Roman, and Han, and I already talked about him, but Vince from the first movie, remember when he said, Try Fat Burger from now on, you can get yourself a double cheese and fries for two ninety five. Nice friend. And, 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 How Ludacris is in it? <laughs> yes! Ludacris is in this! Oh, I've been dreaming about this day, and now it's finally here. Ludacris is back. Asterisk. All the returning characters are more or less exactly as they should be. Vince is still an angry hothead, and Roman is the best character in the entire series, a cocky, big mouth jokester. Hani's chips, Gazelle is... I don't care. But then there's Ludacris's Tej Parker. In Too Fast Too Furious, he was the hyper cool owner of a garage who threw lavish parties with jet skiers and hosted insane street races. He was big, charismatic, and fun. He was really cool. In Fast Five, however, he's not the same playboy rock star. He's introduced by Brian as someone who's good with circuits, which is never something we see in Too Fast. We've never even seen him working on a car in Too Fast, but what's even worse than that is he isn't written the way he was before either. He's now really quiet and monotone and a tech genius. I get that he needed to have some sort of useful skill for the big crazy heist, but his swag is all off and his demeanor is rather troublesome. Okay, make him the tech genius, that's totally fine, but why is he so swagless? The writing is making me call Ludacris swagless. Do you have any idea how much that hurts? Cause I, like, I know it's not true. In Too Fast, it was certainly apparent that he was being played by a cocky young rapper who was just happy to be there, but that wasn't a bad thing. That was a great attitude to have for what that movie was, and I'd love to see a tech genius guy at the computer who has that sort of personality. It'd be really refreshing. Not to mention that, you know, jumping ahead a little bit, when the heist finally does happen, Mia's the one at the computer, but anyway. There are a few moments that stand out, like his iconic, did he grab the ass or smack it line, which he initially uses when Gazelle covertly gets Reyes's handprint on her ass. Fucking hell. Sorry, I just remembered I'm gonna die one day. Anyway, then he reuses the line after finding out Mia's prank and aunt, which is inappropriate enough to be funny. And then at the end of the movie, he has some joie de vivre back, but overall, the direction this character has taken is just a, a bit of a bummer. Anyway, his aspirations for wanting to help Brian and me and Dom are also very confusing if you take his past into consideration. He wants the money so he can open a garage back home and fix cars for people. You mean what he was doing in Too Fast? Did the writers just like forget or something? I said forget about it, cuz. I said forget about it, cuz. Chris Morgan, what the fuck were you talking about? Aww, can't say mad at this little guy. So the whole gang is here, and their plan is to get Reyes to pool all his money into one place so they only have to rob one location. Problem is, that location is the police station, because he owns the police. Who are the real bad guys? So they have to do recon and come up with a plan. It's a heist movie, people! There's all sorts of shenanigans, they steal cop cars, street race the cop cars, blow shit everywhere in this fucking disgusting scene. Roman continues to be the best character in this franchise by far. I need this you, I need crazy. you to shut up right now. I'm, trying I'm to not gonna shut up. Oh, I'm gonna get this money! I'm hungry! So your dream is to start, start a day job? That's, that's stupid. License and registration, please! <laughs> It's nice to finally see these iconic characters meet and interact for the first time. I know everyone left Fast 4 thinking, Damn! If only Han and Gazelle could have met! And now they do! Roman seems a bit apprehensive of meeting Dom at first, like he doesn't trust him or something. Like he's jealous that his ex-boyfriend is hanging out with some other American muscle. Speaking of American muscle, who can forget Dom and Dwayne Johnson's iconic fight? <laughs> Oh yeah, Vince also dies. He gets welcomed back into the family, then arrested by Dwayne Johnson, and then shot by Slipknot. You gotta meet my son, Nico. You know, we named him after you. Dominic. That seems kind of weird. Yeah, I had this friend, Dominic Toretto, who was a piece of shit and he ruined my life. And he was a good friend. I shall name my firstborn after him. Wait, so this movie has a character named Roman. And Nico? 
Nico, it's me, Roman, your cousin, let's go bowling. Probably the funniest part of this heist though is the world around it. Yes, Brazil is designated as a funny country in the geopolitical sense, you know, haha, come to Brazil, Brazil Minecraft portal, but in this film, it's depicted as a pretty destitute and brutal place. Like I said earlier, Hernan Reyes practically owns Rio, the majority of all the police are loyal to him, and the poor people of the favelas have no choice but to serve him if they want their basic necessities to be covered. In most stories like this, such as Los Bandoleros, there would be an emphasis on the oppressed people people rising up or wanting to give back to them in some way. It would be the goal of our heroes to steal the money to free the people from Reyes' chains, but it isn't. In fact, they never even come close to expressing this idea. They're stealing from the rich and giving to themselves. Even in Fast Five, Dwayne Johnson's sidekick Elena reads out Dom and Brian's bio and is like, they steal gas trucks and give it to the people. They're known for doing this, at least since the fourth movie. Is this sloppy writing on Chris Morgan's part? or is there something deeper going on here? I think the money that the crew steals belongs to the people really, not Reyes. Reyes very openly and devilishly exploits them to make sure that he makes a dollar and they make a penny. So Dom's crew is stealing the fruits of a far worse off people's labor, and there's also the question of whether or not crippling Reyes' power would really be a good thing or not. In this movie's world, the things he gives to the people are not things someone like him should have to give. These are things that the government is supposed to be providing, but without him, now the people have no running water or electricity or schools even. But Roman and Tej do have a cool car now, so. I think the film does make commentary about how wealth, greed, and crime harm the communities they take hold in. Brazil gets ravaged by Dom's crew in their wild playtime, but the most obvious metaphor for the harm Reyes was causing has to be the vault. You might be asking how this is a metaphor for what Reyes was doing if Dom and Brian are literally doing it. Shut up, shut the hell up. The vault represents everything Reyes has been doing, the greed, the crime, the horrors, it is all represented by this vault as it rips and tears through the city, destroying banks, cars, infrastructure. It's paraded down the streets of Rio, no longer the subtle dark force behind the scenes, it's front and center. Here is where your money went, and here is what it's doing to you. I, t I don't know, whatever. Like I said in the Tokyo Drift episode, that one was special for actually being subtle and deep and nuanced. They can't all be. Unless... No. But it is a lot of fun. Fast Five is really when things go from crazy to fucking crazy. Yeah, I know I said Force and Furious was the start of the action bullshit age of the series, but Fifth and Furious goes even more action bullshit than that. Even the bus flip is outrageous, you're telling me Brian isn't the deadest man of all time for that impact? From the very beginning, the tone has been set. If you're trying to watch these movies while being a dumb, stupid nerd and going, Heh, that would never work in real life. Maybe those meatheads need to spend less time playing with cars and more time at the library! I'm gonna take a big book and flatten you in the pages like a bug. I don't need this movie to make airtight sense. You know, it's the fifth Fast and Furious film, not the 9-11 commission report. Oh wow! Everything in here makes so much sense! This clears up everything! Getting back to the vault scene... Um, this shit is really cool. Swinging a vault around with two Dodge Chargers like it's a flail or mace or Morningstar whip or whatever and vaporizing everything in your path is pure genius on the part of everyone who made that scene a reality. The sheer destruction is jaw-dropping, especially when you know what they went through to create this action sequence. For a series that had CGI cars in Too Fast, the dedication this team had to practical effects is nothing short of incredible and dangerous and kind of scary. Vanity Fair put out an amazing video with stunt coordinator Jack Gill back in 2019 that breaks down the vault scene and it's shocking how much of this ass crazy chase scene is CGI. But if I'm going to show you how much of this scene is CGI, you're not going to believe this. That shot right there, the vault is CGI. The rest is real. You heard me. They really did this. Now obviously they didn't just attach a 9,000 pound vault to two Dodge Chargers and run it down the streets of Rio. Not for every shot anyway. They did for a lot of them though, and the stunt drivers had to learn how to cooperatively handle a 9,000 pound safe and send it swinging in the stunt cars or even harder, send it swinging without hitting anything. Jack talks a lot about a crucial aspect of good action scenes, and that's making it feel up close, real, and dangerous. 
They put extras and stuntmen in the bank to run away while one of their vaults got thrown through it. They put a camera as close to the vault as they could to make the audience go, oh holy shit. The scenes where they needed to not hit anything, they built two drivable vaults. One that was just the front three walls attached to the front of a semi-truck for smashing into rows of parked cars, and the other one was a sodden half pickup truck with a vault built around it and inside it, it was almost 200 degrees. They stuck a stuntman in an oven and made him do precise stunt driving. Okay, they didn't just let him cook in there, they filled the car with dry ice and pumped in cool air to keep him from passing out, which he did a lot apparently, and also built him a toilet inside because it took too much time to get him in and out. So basically, this man was stunt driving a 200 degree solid steel porta potty. Stuntmen deserve to win Oscars. Ah oh, man, and then the climax of the chase on the bridge when Dom cuts Brian loose and stares down all the cops while revving his engine, and he pops a wheel and hits the NOS. Does he even count as film analysis anymore? And he goes to the side, smashing into every cop car that comes his way, and slices this guy's fucking head off. There was a real stuntman in that car for some reason. If he didn't duck in time, he'd actually would have sliced his head off. And the police say, bring out the Gatling gun. And Dom's like, Bwah! this is peak Fast and Furious. Like, I I'm sorry, maybe it's the heat of the moment, but holy shit, it has never been cooler than this. I'm sorry, Sean, and little Bow Wow, but what do you see what I see? This scene doesn't stop being impressive. What Fast Five lacks in terms of deep narrative substance, it well makes up for with technical spectacle and just being more fun than a barrel of monkeys. You're not likely to leave Fast Five with any sort of profound wisdom or insight. It's a solid action movie that takes action scenes that would be incredibly stupid in the hands of maybe any other team and elevates them to this place where the only way you can deny their accomplishments and sheer impressiveness is just out of pure ignorance. I mean, I guess you could also just not like it, but if I say the previous sentence then it sounds more like objectively correct instead of me just saying shit. There is one thing I think we need to talk about though. The poster. This might seriously be the worst poster of all time. This shit is a poopster. Like, what were they thinking? This is a cool action movie. High testosterone, big cars, big men. Why did they decide to have Vin Diesel standing there like, Oh, what do I do with my hands? The perspective is all f***ed up. It's, just, it's so wrong. This looks like something a 14-year-old whips up in paint.net. Yeah, not even Photoshop. This is GIMP. This is Print Shop 12. The ground is just one massive slab of asphalt. Did they make this in two hours before the movie? was due. Why did this remain the poster for the DVD release? They have this other one that's so much better. Vin, Paul and the Rock holding guns and there's a car. Fast Five, much better. Vince is sitting down on something and they cut out his seat. Why are they all so small? Make the returning cast members big. That's a huge part of the marketing for this. <sighs> Fast Five. What else is there to say about Fast Five? It was a turning point in the franchise. Four had pointed us towards whacking over the top action, but Five blew away everyone's expectations so much that a lot of people didn't even want to go back to the smaller scale stakes of the original three. Those movies had their time, but after you use a 9,000 pound volt as a bullwhip to murder the entire Rio de Janeiro police department, you can't come back for part six and be like, uh, what if the manager of the Pizza Hut put PlayStation in his Kia Soul? They had no choice but to go even crazier, put these characters in even more perilous situations, and crank shit up even higher than they were here. Financially and critically speaking, the franchise had never been in a better position, and there's not a lot of other series out there doing that on their fifth entry. I'm through this time, I'm over you! Oh shit, is that Ava Mendez, Agent Monica Fuentes from Too Fast, Too Furious? She works for Dwayne Johnson, that's crazy, they even brought her back. Wonder what she's talking about. <laughs> Let's get some pussy tonight.